Hi and welcome back to the Conscious Day Trader. This is Phoenix. Um, you're gonna hear him a lot because uh, he meows a lot. But I thought I'd give him a hug so he doesn't meow for the intro at least. Uh, I am the Conscious Day Trader and I break down ICT uh, 2022 mentorship trades every day. I break down my entries, my management, my exit. Um, and if you like the content, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel because I do that on a daily basis and I try and answer all the comments and everything that you throw at me. I'm trying to uh, support uh, you guys out there. So that being said, we've had a really bad Friday trading. Uh, in terms of uh, the results, it's still green. It says $15 on it, but it wasn't a good trade. I had to uh, manage it over the weekend and I closed today, this morning, during the, um, the pre-market of the London session, or do, actually it was London Open, London Kill Zone. Uh, I had a setup going long on the pound. I'm gonna break into this. This is gonna be quite, um, quite a long video, so I'm, I, I'm not gonna apologize for it because I think you're gonna learn a lot from it. We can't just give you all the good trades, we have to give you the bad trades, and those normally are the ones that make us better. And and if we think about it, it is actually a good trade because we managed to manage out of it with uh, not hitting that barrier that we've said. The whole, I, I risk about a week's worth. Um, I haven't had a, a loss yet at red day. So that would be my maximum drawdown to be 2000 to $2,500. This one went close, went $1,900. Uh, so uh, was I uncomfortable? Over the weekend I was just because um, I hate carrying trades over the weekend and I am human and we'll go into why I traded Friday afternoon after CPI news, which I never do, but we'll go into it why I did that um, and how I managed it over on today, on Monday. So um, what we're gonna see, like we discussed, is you're gonna see entries, you're gonna see management, you're also gonna see ICT, uh, breaking down how I made bias, um, how my bias was wrong on Friday, but was correct today, and that man I managed to get out of that trade. Um, I'm gonna do all that. So all I ask for you is to make sure you like and subscribe to the channel, as that helps a lot, and um, Without further ado, let's jump on to MT5. So it says 69970, that's from Friday. So technically, um, the, the, the day closed with $15 on Friday and 680 on um, uh, today. So we're gonna go look into that. What I've done on the charts, I've put the worst trade, which was 119901 on my entry. And the best position, which was 19350. So you can see we have a range of, of trades there. Um, I had to manage this trade, so I had to I had my two positions and my best and worst positions. I had to uh, reposition them. And looking at this chart now on the MT5, look at that ICT entry. Came back, filled in, and pushed up. I got out here. I could have made a lot of money on that. But carrying trades over the weekend, um, that's the result. I wanted to be out of it, so I closed the trade. So we're going to go on to and break this down. So these are the trades. Um, this one's on the price, and we can see the all the at different prices that I had to trade. I basically got an entry around here, if you can see. Uh, that was my worst entry, and then it went down. I could reposition this entry here from here to here, reposition down to here, and then I had to wait. Um, for the um, um, for the weekend to happen, I couldn't reposition my my top trade, and that's why I went into this drawdown, which was one thousand nine hundred dollars. Um, if ha we had a break of structure below that, which we did have here, however, I did manage to make some money through this, so the the damage was less here. It was one thousand three hundred dollars. And then we had this break of structure, which we're going to go and see. Then I got a fill in here and came all the way up. I killed that. I could have I could have come all the way back up to my first trend tree, which was here, but that would have been now, which is eight o'clock at night. Um, 
so I didn't want to do that so I killed the trade and uh, with a good profit today so overall um, before we jump onto the charts we're gonna see let's jump on to our week and we're gonna move our face out of the way right there that's the January and that's February as you can see we have made less than 10k but considering what happened this Friday here $15 um, I, I carried over the weekend with a I think it was a thousand two hundred drawdown so not a good place to be uh, however I did have a plan I thought I had more trades but this this is not a lot of repositions which is probably a good thing that I managed to get um, sort it out nine trades um, which were two trades but repositioned um, so overall look at this week compared to this one 38 40 31 now let's look at these trades 15 57 trades uh, on this one because we had obviously we traded every single day and we had two days of averaging 18 to 14 okay getting better this average of the week is a lot better um, than this one which was a lot of trades 45 38 31 40 38 uh, the 10k month and that's something we've discussed if you're following me that I want to get better at minimizing that this week here 26 trades in total with a full of trading is really good and we've got one more day so it is looking like we're gonna make seven thousand five hundred dollars I have taken out my first payment from the fiber so I'll, I'll show you that um, actually let's show you now so this is my performance uh, since uh, when I opened the account on the 31st when I got given this account on the 31st of uh, first so this year um, and we had we're going on a nice trend upwards we can see on the progression where we're four hundred and twenty dollars away from getting at one hundred and seventy five dollars I believe you can't see that because of my face let's move that um, there you go so you can see that is uh, is, is getting we're, we're very close to getting an upgrade on this account uh, we're running on 80 percent um, 88 percent of my trades are profitable 47 percent are uh, losses profit and deals uh, 59 short long positions if you don't know what this is this is the charts that you get and information that you get on the prop firm and um, you can use this to see how well you're doing your best profit has been 519 my worst loss has been 355 best pip count 52 average profits around 116 that's when I was trading a bit less with a smaller account um, and average loss around $50 um, we're running on a 4.0 uh, profit factor that's really good um, and you can still see that so that's from the five as you can see we only trade two assets so we've got the pound dollar and you've got the euro dollar uh, I keep my assets I mainly trade the pound dollar 95% of these trades uh, are 128 trades are done on the uh, pound dollar so I'm a very big fan of pound dollar <laughs> I follow the news as well in the UK so if there's something coming up that can it gives me a good um, uh, warning on not to be in however I did trade on Friday after news so let's let's discuss that let's go back on um, this one which we this is why you're here I'm gonna try and keep it sharp I know it's gonna be a long video because it's gonna be a bit of me uh, explaining uh, my bad due diligence of not taking what taking a trade when I shouldn't let's go back to Friday Friday I was planning to trade my London Open however my wife told me that we actually um, I had told you a week ago that we can't trade on Friday because uh, we're going to meet uh, some we're going on a play date and you know that time when you're you really I had my target I wanted to hit a bit higher than 7k getting close to that 10k of the month so I really wanted to use this day on Friday to make that that if I had been short for instance that might have been a good trade if I had if I'd taken that um, so long story short I didn't trade so I decided not to trade for the day however we came back um, during New York open 
And yes, I did. I did check the charts and I saw this opportunity and I was like, oh, it was down here. Um, let's see, Friday, New York. It had pushed down all the way down here. And let's take out these are scruffy levels. If you if you don't know what they are, follow the scruffy trader. I put these on and off just uh, sometimes to see how they correspond with my um, uh, my ideology of what I'm doing with ICT. There we go. We can hide them and put them back on with this tree, which is great. So this was Friday 6 a.m. We missed that move. We came back and around uh, three o'clock, I opened the charts and saw this. Let's take this out of the picture so we can see what we were looking at. And uh, I had put my daily bias. If you haven't seen that, go and check my other videos because uh, we're not gonna we're gonna spend so much time analyzing this. We don't want to go in detail. So what we saw here was this. Look how nice this looks. Okay, so we had this move here consolidated, big push up, consolidation filled this fair value gap right there i'm gonna do rough today rough and quick because we're frustrated <laughs> for our trading fair value gap there we go so that got filled boom 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 came down uh, and then we had continuation in in super ict glory uh fill fair value gap came down filled that fair value gap came down fair value gap down down then it hit this area here what we have below here is buy side uh, sell side liquidity so let's grab that sell side liquidity below this area right there Normally, where we have sell side liquidity, we also have fair value gaps, but we had this wick here that didn't give you that fair value gap. The only fair value gap we had, we're on the one hour and we had it here. So, Yanis was eager. All right, let's see. So, we saw the fair value gaps. That's the fair value gap there. We saw this playing out. So we saw buy side liquidity, sell side liquidity taken out. So what was the game plan on Friday? We had a strong push during the London Open. It gave you that, that sort of Judas move and then pushed down. Okay. What did it target? The lows of this. Took out sell side liquidity. Took out sell side liquidity. Comes down. Now, why... I got in there. Let's go back. Let's go down to the, the five minute charts. And as you can see, after that move into the sell side liquidity, it had also broken the previous daily low. And I was on the one minute and I saw this and I was like, bingo. I got in here. Okay. There was a lot of things that went wrong with this trade. First of all, if I was going in, it didn't matter that much anyway, I would have waited to get in on this fair value gap here. So I should technically be getting in below here. You might say, okay, that's what, two pips, three pips? But you need to be, okay, 1.3 pips. So not far away. I got a, a little bit worse fill, but that was my, my trade. That's where I got in. That's my worst entry. Look how bad that looks, right? How many people would have taken a big loss out of this? And I was close. However, I was able to manage this. Um, like you know, I manage my trades with my own sort of way, my own repositioning. It's a bit of a combination of the Scruffy Traders method called the Scruffy Madness, a bit of my own experience of seeing how I behave around the charts, what makes me patient, how quickly do I need to get into the trade, and so on. So it, it was pretty evident. We, I, we went into a bit of profit. Um, it was like, I don't know, uh, not a lot. And I didn't kill it, obviously, like two, three pips. And then it came down, consolidated. And at this stage here, we had another break. So I got my second position, I believe. I haven't put all my positions in, so we'll be here forever. But I got my second position roughly around here on this fair value gap. And then it came back down and I tried to kill this trade, but it didn't come up high enough so I can use that second trade. So I killed my, I held my, um, my, this trade and I killed this for a little bit of profit. 
Then it came down, crashed down, and that's when I knew something's not right. What should I have done here? I got a position, to, I got two positions here. I got, I went total three positions, there and there. And this trade here paid me about $200 after being down quite substantial eight or $900 or whatever it was, I can't remember exactly. Why did I not kill this? It's Friday night, it's after news. So many things can happen. This could be a Judas move, or this could be a Judas move and push down. I should have killed the trade. $200, yes, it was below my 400 to 500 target, but it, it was a news day and I was trading afternoon. Uh, I, should, I should have just killed it, gone to bed. It was seven o'clock at night, eight. What did I do? I thought this is the break. I thought this is gonna be the break that's gonna go higher. So I waited and then we went into that drawdown there, which was um, at $1,300. And then I had to wait over the weekend. Consolidated, consolidated. I had to sit on that 1,000 sort of drawdown, maximum drawdown. When, I, when it closed for the weekend, it was $1,300. And then I was um, deciding to see what was my plan. And then I zoomed out a little bit and I looked at the bigger time frame uh, just to see what my plan was going to be. I didn't like holding over the night, over the weekend. Uh, if it was closer to my targets of like killing the trade, if it was around 2000, I would have killed it on Friday. I wouldn't have left that. Wait to see what the, the, the outcome would be of the uh, weekend gap up or gap down. But we, we still had room. We st pretty much had another grand uh, in my risk management. So I wanted to see uh, what's, if I could, because I really like the position we were in. Um, and this is why it's key to know your pair really well. I, kn I know the pound dollar and it can't go down forever like that. It's going to be a retracement. Now, if the retracement, the, I, I thought the retracement is going to happen at sell side liquidity below here. And it happened earlier and it failed to break this high. Soon as I saw failing to break this and a confirmation of this fair value gap, I was quite confident. Today I was quite confident. I woke up and I said to Jen um, that, you know, this trade is gonna work out. It's, it's a good trade. Uh, just because, yes, I got in a bit early, very early, uh, but I managed to bring the risk. During the open, I was break even. And now I just wanted to pay. Ideally, I wanted to get paid a grand so I could have my $500 of Friday and $500 of Monday. But I could have done it if I left the chart work, do its magic as it did here. But I was so tired and uh, I was, as soon as I saw uh, above $500, I was like, great, let's, let's do that. And let's go straight on the fivers and get some money because I think we've done a lot of work this, uh, this since 2023 and we can see that a lot of green work and I think we deserve a payout. So I've taken out 5K uh, from my Fiverr's account to for, for this month that I'm gonna use in Bali. And um, I wanted to leave some money in for a buffer. I My psychology works better when I have money into the account, just to know that if something like this happens, I'm not, um, you know, my psychology is fine to deal with it. I'm not thinking, damn, this is quite a big drawdown now to the account. And if you think about it, if I take 5K, we've got another 12K into the account, uh, which is uh, as a buffer. Uh, so we're all good. Okay, so that was the, uh, the trade. Um, what I wanted to also show you is what happened on the dollar index. So now we're current, current situation. This is uh, Monday, previous day previous daily high from the low and the uh, from the uh, Friday, why was I confident that the dollar is going to be selling off? First, we had this big push here. Hit the previous highly, high, uh, created the daily high, and then we had a push even higher that we saw on the pound dollar of uh, taking out that sell side liquidity, and here taking out this buy side liquidity. 
this is where I wanted to see a reaction and I wanted to see a strong reaction and it gave me that and now it's breaking below these this sell side liquidity here it's also targeting this fair value gap here and let's put those in because it's good practice sell side there and that is our fair value gap and it's on the hour one hour fair value gap boom where that can go down you can come down to here or fill further into that so uh, that's what we had um there and this is look like a, you see these and you're like oh a new setup but no we're reviewing our oh, this morning trade we're not going to trade anymore uh what else can we see this is my worst case scenario why let's go on a bigger time frame four hour we have a swing high here remember we've been working off this four hour fair value gap i think the price is going to come the dollar is going to eventually come to this buy side liquidity i don't know when it's going to happen but i was anticipating this move this huge move here to have a retracement and that's what gave me the opportunity to get out of the trade okay so i think we've gone long enough and it's late at night i'm waiting for my food um bearing in mind the the bad friday trade i think it's the best i've been able to handle it psycholo psychologically just because I have that fixed mindset of what my loss is going to be. If it goes to that level, two to two and a half K, I'm killing the trade. And I know that I'm a good enough trader uh, to manage trades that I'm in drawdown just because I'm very uh, meticulous with my analysis and I can see how bad it is. And even though it sounds ridiculously bad, 1,300, you have to remember I'm trading on a big account. So this account is 150,000, close to 175,000. And my drawdown on that account is about roughly 20K, let's say. So I have a lot of room to, to do this. If you're trading with a 2,300 account, 2,000 account, obviously your risk has to be to $100, $200 max. Um, so don't look at these big numbers and think, wow, his risk is crazy. It's not, it's all relative to um, your account size. As you can see, we're, it's raining. We've got some background noise. It's uh, raining season still. It's getting towards the end, but it's still raining season in Bali. After these two, three weeks, we're gonna have sunshine all till um, September or October, I think. Um, so let's hope we survive this uh, this raining season well i'm glad we survived this trade trading if you want to know anything uh, i know you're going to get some questions about this trade sync it's i'm going to put it in the in the in the details below this video it has been a tough one but we got through it we are i'm super proud of this 7k in a month considering i used to make uh what was it 2000 uh that's nearly like triple my salary and where it's still all green and we're improving on the lot sizes all is good uh, i hope you've enjoyed this video and you've got something from it it was a bit raw in terms of my uh i'm still with the emotions of uh what are the emotions the emotions are a bit of um i'm gutted that i traded on friday night cpi news as well like there was no reason look at this we had we were on a 1800 dollar week great week and we only had two days uh to to go to finish the month no reason to take risks at that stage um i think the weather is agreeing with me it's like why did you do that i'm gonna cry my eyes out behind you <laughs> um okay i'm tired right i'm gonna go to bed i hope you enjoyed it and i'll catch you next one